Hi guys, and welcome back to the Big Sew Along. I'm Ginny, and as always, I thank you very much for choosing to spend a little time with me. Those of you who uh, caught my last video will remember that I was out of town last week. I went up to Vermont to visit, um, I always say my dad, but when I say my dad, I actually mean my dad and my stepmom, who is also equally important to me. And um, so I just don't want anybody to think I'm, I'm ignoring my stepmom. I have a wonderful stepmom. Um, she's a dear, dear friend of mine. I also um, got to see my sister, uh, who is not in, she's in New Hampshire. I always get them mixed up. My sister and her husband um, are in New Hampshire, and as is my niece. Um, I have I have another niece and a nephew, but they don't live there anymore. They've moved away. But anyways, so I got to see my dad, my stepmom, my sister, her husband, um, and my niece, which was really lovely. I haven't seen her for a while, and I got to meet my dad's new dog, Cinnamon, who is potentially the only dog I have ever met that didn't like me. But she's very, very cute, and I think I was maybe growing on her by the time I left. Anyways, because I was on this little weekend trip, I thought um, it would be a good time to tell you guys uh, what, how I plan a travel weekend travel wardrobe. So, let me see, what do I have here? I have some pictures. For a four-day weekend, I left on Thursday, I came home on Sunday. So two of those days are travel days and two of those days are visiting days. So I'll give you a little graphic here. This is like essentially what I packed. I have two pairs of black pants. I have three white tunic type dress things. I have one long sleeve white t-shirt and I have two lightweight and easy to pack sweaters. One is a red pullover that I bought at Target last fall. And the other one is a, like a darker burgundy kind of red um, cashmere sweater that's really warm, um, but also really lightweight and easy to pack. And that one is a thrift store purchase. In addition to those items, I uh, wear, I do my best to wear one pair of shoes. I took one pair of boots. Um, they these I always I try to travel with these boots because they zip on and off instead of having to unlace them or anything when I go through the airport. Um, and I also took uh, obviously like undergarments and something to sleep in. Um, and that was it. So I get a fair amount of stuff packed in a pretty small suitcase. But anyways, I thought I would show you how I sort of maintained my um, style while working with a really minimal wardrobe. So here we go. Day one um, is a travel day, and this is the outfit that I wore. This is, um, I'll show you this one first. This are my uh, Berta pants, and let me see if I can remember what number that is. It is Berta, it is, I think it's called, it's Berta Young, it's an old pattern. It's Berta 7546, you guys will probably remember me making this not that long ago. I love these pants. <laughs> um, in fact, this is, I think, the second time I've taken them on a weekend away, and I I love wearing them. They're just so easy. In this pattern, in this picture, I'm wearing them with um, the so, lo so liberated metamorphic dress. Now, this dress actually is meant to be a double layer. It's got two layers, so it's reversible. I just made it in the one layer, and this I just wear it like this, like almost like a slip over pants or a longer slip or something. And then here it is with my red Target sweater over it. You guys probably imagine I don't buy a lot of clothes. Um, and aside from sewing, I'm also an avid knitter and crocheter, so I make a lot of knitwear of my own. But for some reason, the stuff I <laughs> the stuff I make never seems to be like basic enough to go with a lot of things. And when I travel, I really want everything just to go together. I don't want any one-offs. So every once in a while, I do buy something. This Target sweater has come in really handy. I I only bought it last fall, but I've worn it a ton. Um, it's lightweight, easy to pack, and also I can throw it in the washer, which is really nice. Okay, that was day one. That was a travel day. Day two was we went to the museum. 
We went to the Hood Museum on Dartmouth campus, which is a lovely museum. If you've never been there, you should go. Um, and this is what I wore. These pants I, are not me made. These are from a company called Skippy Cotton. And I, the only place I know, if I can find a link to her shop or her Instagram, I will link it for you below. But I bought these pants at a little boutique last time I was in Chicago. And she carries a lot of other really cool things. She's a very tiny store, but she has really interesting things. Um, so if I can find the name of her store, I'll link that for you below also. Anyways, these are just a cotton pant with a drawstring and elastic waist. They have a gathered cuff, and I know you can't see it in these pictures, but they have like a really cute little like um, button detail on the cuffs. I'm wearing this with my ancient Tina Gibbons Zelda slip. Now I'll show you a picture here of the Zelda pattern. This Zelda slip that I have on here is pretty heavily altered. I did do a video on how I made this dress. So again, if I can find it, I'll link it right below. This is another thing that I literally wear all the time, all year long. And in fact, I feel like I really need to make another one. This is obviously it's in white linen. It's getting a little worn in areas. So I really need to make a new one of those. And, uh, this is that, this is it underneath my, um, vintage, uh, thrift store cashmere sweater. Um, this is a really good sweater, uh, to pack just because it's really warm. The cashmere is warm, but it's really lightweight and it doesn't take up very much room in my suitcase. So I tend to travel with this one a lot too. So that was day one and day two, day three it was last Saturday. And uh, the Northeast had a huge snowstorm that day. My parents got about two feet of snow, I think, in one day. <laughs> Which is, uh, if you're from the Northeast, that probably seems like nothing to you. Um, for me, here in Michigan, that would also be not so bad, except that it was in March. Um, and also, we just, here in Michigan, we just have not had a lot of snow this year. Which is, in all honesty, kind of disappointing for me. Because I'm a winter person, I love snow mostly i love a reason to curl up on my couch and read a book or knit and snow always seems like a good excuse for that but anyway <laughs> i haven't had uh that much snow this year so it was nice to have snow uh at my dad's house which meant that my dad my stepmom and i really stayed in the house pretty much the whole day um we played games we cooked um we watched tv and it was really lovely cozy day which means that i didn't really have to even get dressed i did i wore my skippy cotton pants again um this time with my white target t-shirt and my red target sweater it still looks like a pretty cute outfit even if you're just hanging around the house day four was my day it was my trip home um so for that i wore where's my picture so for my trip home i wore my i forgot to take a picture of the slip by itself but i wore the um the crystal larson inspired uh slip dress that i made a few weeks ago in white linen and this one was made from a couple of tablecloths this i used the essex seamstress brighton camisole pattern for this um i'm wearing it again with my berta pants and I have that um, thrift store sweater over it as well. I could have just as easily worn this with like a plain my white t-shirt over it. But because I, I had both options. But because it was still pretty cold, I went with the cashmere sweater. And I wasn't honestly so sure about this outfit when I put it on. But then I was in the airport on the way home and somebody stopped me and told me how much they loved my outfit. So like, I guess it was a win after all. That is my travel wardrobe i hope you guys um find that helpful for planning your next travel weekend i um like i said my big goals are to w carry one pair of shoes wear one pair of shoes and make sure that everything else i take goes together so that they can all mix and match in case like i get one thing dirty i can swap it out for something else okay now after that trip, I had been telling myself for ages that I wanted to make another one of those, um, another pair of those bird of pants because I really love them. I know you guys like, I know not all of you like those drop crotch pants, but I have to tell you they're so comfortable and easy. I mean, they're as comfortable as wearing a skirt, only you don't have to worry about them like 
getting blown up or anything. So, when I got back, uh, my friend Susan called and said that Haberman's had got, uh, our local fabric store here, had got a new delivery of um, linens, and I ran over and picked up this one, which is like a yellowy green, and I'm definitely going to use this for my um, next bird of pants, and I had this hot pink cotton, uh, I think it's voil, it's voil or lawn, I'm not really sure, um, in my stash, and so I've already cut this out, I'm going to make another one of those Sussex seamstress, um, like, camisole dresses, like the white one there, um, and I, I love these two colors together, I think that's going to be fabulous, that Sussex seamstress camisole dress that I made, I, I loved wearing that, I, it just, I don't know why, it feels really good, I love the way it looks, I think this time I will cut it as a circle skirt instead of that um, sort of rectangular way I cut before. Also, I have this fabric. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. This is actually a really fine uh, polyester crepe. Very lightweight. I got This was one of the fabrics that I got from Kathy as a gift from her mom's stash. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There is some yellow in there. I'm going to make another... Sussex seamstress camisole dress out of this to also go with my Berta pants. So that's what I'm going to be working on for the next few days. Today I am wearing um, another thing I definitely want to make again. This is, I'll show you a picture here, this is the um, So Liberated Schoolhouse tunic. I did not have enough fabric for sleeves so I just left them off. Um, I also had to add this binding at the neckline because I didn't even have enough fabric to bind my armholes. So I bound them in black um, bias tape and I left it exposed and then afterwards my friend Marsha was like, well, I don't, I, I don't really like just the exposed black on the shoulders. It looks it's too standalone. So we decided I should put some around the neck, which is what I did. I can't remember which one of you guys recommended this uh, dress to me. It was probably a year ago, or maybe even more. Um, and I remember I purchased it on, from an Etsy vendor like right after you suggested it. And then I stuck it in my stash, as one does, and completely forgot about it. And I broke it out uh, like a week or so ago and decided just to whip it up in this fabric. This fabric, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I got this from... Emma one sock and there are little fish all over it. It's super cute. Anyways, um, whoever recommended this to me, thank you so much because I love this dress. Um, I saw another version of this um, that somebody hacked on Pinterest or something or Instagram. If I can find the picture, I'll, show, I'll put it up here. Otherwise, I'm going to make this again the way she made it and I will show you that. Maybe I'll get that done for next week as well. Not really sure. Um, I have uh, workers coming to the house uh, tomorrow. So that's going to really, it's like the whole day on Good Friday. So that's going to totally blow my sewing time for the day. Anyways, I'm really glad to be back. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for everybody who left me such lovely comments about um, going to visit my dad. I really do appreciate that. I appreciate all your comments all the time. So keep them coming. Until next week, I wish you all happy sewing.